Hi, this is Brian Forster, and today we're exploring Luxor in the central part of ancient Egypt. And what I want to show you is the clear distinction between dynastic work, such as the wall in the background, and pre-dynastic, which are these giant one-piece granite sculptures. So as we approach, you can see, or you should be able to see, that each one of these statues is one piece of stone weighing up to 300 or 400 tons. And this obelisk, which I believe weighs about 450 tons and is one piece of stone, this could not have been achieved by the dynastic Egyptians and must have been an inheritance, as were the large sculptures. This sculpture, again, one piece of granitic stone. The stone is likely from Aswan, which is hundreds of miles away. That's where the quarry is. And you can see very fine craftsmanship and also signs of cataclysmic damage. And here, as we look on the right-hand side, another one of these giant sculptures weighing in the region of 400 tons. And look at the massive damage to the surfaces that was done by the ancient cataclysm of about 12 to 13,000 years ago. Also, as we walk along the central axis, we're walking through the pre-dynastic section that has the giant statues. And on the left-hand side, I believe, is either dynastic or Roman or even possibly uh, Muslim time period construction because there is a mosque on the left. And then you can see that the avenue suddenly jogs by about 23 degrees to the left. So this could show us that the axis of the Earth changed between the pre-dynastic time and the dynastic time. Again, we're walking up to a large uh, sculpture, statue. Look at the fine uh, muscle toning. Once again, it's one piece of stone. Uh, finally finished, this could not have been done during dynastic times, and compare that with these columns, which are from the dynastic period, and they are made of multiple pieces of sandstone stacked on top of one another. Now we're looking at the back of another giant pre-dynastic statue. And now we're going to walk up to another one of these large statues. Once again, one piece of very hard granite stone, and look at the glyphs. The one I'm going to be put, uh, putting my finger into was likely done by a machine during dynastic times and contrast that with the much cruder work above which is dynastic work. The ancient Egyptians did have iron tools at, at one point, probably around 700 BC but they were not able to do the really fine, deep hieroglyphs that we saw with that circle. And again, you see the large statues of pre-dynastic work, um, space between much, much later dynastic sandstone columns of multiple sections. So we're clearly looking at two different time periods of construction. The fine statuary of very hard granite stone, and then the columns made of multiple sections of much softer sandstone. We are now walking through uh, the main dynastic section, or one of them, heading towards what's called the Holy of Holies. And once again, you can see Repair work done on these dynastic columns made of multiple pieces of sandstone. And now we're actually walking back towards the pre-dynastic section through these columns made of multiple pieces of relatively soft sandstone that the dynastic Egyptians clearly could have worked. Uh, the dynastic people did incredible um, architectural and engineering works in this and many other areas. And now just in fine detail, 
look at this block of granite which shows, I believe, extreme erosion and actually cataclysmic damage. This just gives you a glimpse of the incredible work that the dynastic people did in sandstone. Once again, multiple pieces stacked one on top of another. I'm not um, undermining the fact that the dynastic people were astonishing builders, but they did not make the giant statues that we looked at. And finally, going through another part of the dynastic section, And once again, clearly, you can see sandstone sections stacked one on top of another. And I think the story is obvious here. Two different time periods of construction. So if you'd like to learn more in person, please come and join us in Egypt in March of 2021 at www.hiddenincatours.com.